Hello and welcome to my series on digital TV. In this series I'm going to take you through how TV used to be, how it is now in the digital world, and how it can be across a network. And as you can see here, there's a number of devices, both wired and wireless, all running off a simple TV server. I'll take you through how that works from right from the transmitter down to whatever display you might be watching it on. So I'll take you through that over the next few videos and hopefully we'll learn something. I'll just take you through some of the clients that I've got running here, just so you know. On the desktop here, I've got my main computer, which has six monitors, and they're all running just VLC sessions. Over to the side here, I've got a Samsung Tab 2 running VLC. Over here, I have an Acer netbook with Windows running VLC. Down here, I have an Android phone with MX Player. Right here, I have a Raspberry Pi 1 running OSMC. That's working on that screen there. Here, I've got an old MacBook with VLC, a newer MacBook with VLC, and an Acer Linux laptop with VLC. As well as the digital side of things, I'll also go through the RF since that's how it gets here in the first place. So right here I've just got a couple of displays from some of the spectrum of the TV channels here. But I'll go through that in depth in the coming videos. I'm outside one of the TV transmitter towers here at Mount Kutha and the antenna is horizontally polarised with an omnidirectional radiation pattern. So it covers the whole of Brisbane with horizontal polarisation. And then back at the house I've got the antenna also horizontally polarised as shown here so that it matches the polarisation of the transmitter. In the good old days of analogue TV you had your TV with an RF cable coming from the antenna and that was it. And if you didn't have any stations tuned in you'd just see this static pattern like that. Now we can't tune that into any uh, stations now because analogue has long been turned off at the transmitters. So what I'm going to do is use this old VCR here that has an RF output and tune into that channel on this TV. All right, so what I'll just do is go to the channel, auto search for analog TV. This is something you just don't have to do anymore, but for this demo I will. While this may seem pretty mundane to most people, there are actually some young people now who have never had to do this, so I'll just show you what it used to be like. It's still going, it hasn't found anything yet. Now if that was back in the old days with lots of TV stations on analogue, it would have certainly got something by now. But it's still looking for the one channel that's coming out from that VCR. Oh, there's some flickers now, so you can see it's coming up to a signal. And there it is. So it's found a channel, and it's the only channel it will find. And it'll just finish the scan and save that one channel. And it's me. So it's a good channel. The setup I've got here is simply a Raspberry Pi playing from the network. And I've just got an analogue audio and video signal out, going to the line inputs of the video, just to give it a source, and then I get the RF output, which is what I just tuned in on the TV. Now that's running fine, but I want to look at that RF signal a bit closer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this HackRF SDR receiver in line with that RF output. What I'm going to do is take the RF out of here, which will of course lose the picture on the TV, feed it through a splitter, Like so. So now plug it back in. Now it's back to the TV, but I've also got it going to the Hack RF so I can have a look at what's coming out of there. What I've got here is a display of the whole 7 meg channel, and this is the video portion here and the audio is up the top here. Now you can see there's a lot of essentially wasted space, so it's not the most efficient use of that 7 meg channel. Now if I pull the video uh, out of the VCR, you'll see there was a brief gap, but then it's just a solid signal. And that's simply because the VCR is putting out a blue screen here. Okay, so that's what blue looks like on the RF side. Now I'll put that back in. And over here, the audio, if I take the audio out, there's just a carrier without the modulation. So if I plug the audio back in, the audio one starts modulating again. Now I've got the HackRF running at 2 meg instead of 10, simply because the computer's not fast enough to demod at 10 meg. So I'm just showing the audio section of that 7 meg bandwidth. So I'm a bit zoomed in now. And if I put the sound on, there's nothing here, but if I click over the audio, you can hear that there's me in the background. So. That's, that's just using FM, okay, same as an FM radio station. And in the days of old, if you had a radio that went up to these frequencies, you could just listen to the audio side of an analog TV station. 
Now at the moment we've got a good connection, the signal's strong and the pitch is good, but if I pull the antenna out to imitate a bad reception, if I just take that out a little bit, hold it just near the actual socket, you can see that the pitch has gone bad, the signal's dropped off the spec and, but there's still some signal so you can actually make out just a little bit of the picture. Obviously if I take it right away the signal's lost and you get nothing but static. So I'll go back to that just closed almost good scenario. As you can see on the spectrum analyzer there's really not much signal. Now if I plug it in it all comes back and everything's good. But that's the big difference between analog and digital. So with analog even if there's just a little bit of signal you can still make out the picture even though it's weak but with digital if there's not enough signal to get a clean bitstream through then you'll get no picture at all. You may have seen an image similar to this before it's just a test pattern so you can uh, test a lot of components of the video signal and you can see on the spectrum there that it's going crazy, it's heavily modulated. Now way back in the day, like over 20 years ago now, I used to do TV repair on those old TVs and what they had, they had a, a CRT, a cathode ray tube and that's where they got the name tube for mainly Americans called it that, it was that big in Australia we just called it the box, right, it was a big box thing. Now that's probably where YouTube came from because it's a tube. Now in that tube was a very high potential difference, a high voltage, right? It came from the EHT transformer and that would store that voltage even after the things turned off. So I was pretty concerned more, more so in not getting electrocuted because I've seen guys <laughs> being thrown by that where you'd have that, if you ever saw them, they had a suction cap on the tube and that held the voltage, you'd have to discharge that first before you went playing around with them. Uh, we don't really have to worry about that anymore. Here's an example of something that happened when they went from analog to digital. This is the uh, channel spacings for channel 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So it means that for channel 7, which of course traditionally was analog, channel 7 is right there between 181 megahertz and 188. And then we didn't have a channel 8, and there was channel 9 and channel 10. Now they're the analog channels traditionally from what their allocations were. Now when digital came in, there was a period of time when there was both analog and digital being transmitted. So what they did, they couldn't just put it here because 7 was already there. So 7 digital, actually I'll go red, 7 digital just moved over to channel 6. Uh, 9 digital went to channel 8. And 10 digital went to where channel 11 is. So 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. These are the actual channel allocations that have always been. So the analog ones used their actual allocation, 9 was 9, 10 was 10, 7, 7, and when digital came in they just moved them to the side and they had both transmitting simultaneously for a while until everyone got their digital sorted out, and then they shut off the analog. So once analog went, we have the digital channels, and that's why they're on the channels they're on today and not their actual channels, because analog used to take that spot. If you look at the scan list for Brisbane, these are the digital channels that it would scan for. These frequencies here are for 7, 9 and 10. So you can see that that's the center frequency of those channels for 6, 8 and 11 that I just told you about. So you can scan for that and you'll see first of all we'll get ABC, which I didn't talk about before. So ABC's there, there's 7. And because it's digital as you can see there's more than one channel there. But I'll get into that in uh, future videos. There's 9 and 10. So it's found all those stations and SBS will come in in a second as well. There it is and it won't find Biz31 because it's been turned off. So there's an introduction into TV starting with analog since that's how TV started. In the upcoming videos I'll get right into the digital stuff including you know modulation, bandwidth and resolution all that sort of thing so stick around for that.